There is no doubt that the Megalania was an absolute terror. A prehistoric lizard native to Australia, it is a little more interesting than your average reptile. An apex predator, it was one of the most dangerous animals on the Australian subcontinent and was even spiritualized by aboriginal peoples in such a way that it is not unlike the dragons of European folklore. So we're going to have a look at the top 10 freaky facts about the Megalania on this episode of Super Freaky Science. If you want to stay updated on our latest content, don't forget to subscribe. Various reconstructions would have you believe that Megalania measured anywhere from 12 to 25 feet in length and weighed anywhere from 500 to 4,000 pounds. Now that's quite a bit of variance, yet even at the low end of the scale, this is a heavy beast. Using one of today's largest lizards as a reference, the Komodo dragon comes in as a lightweight in comparison. Weighing in at a mere 150 pounds, it is at best less than a third of the size of the Megalania. Therefore, I bet if the two were to square off today, the Komodo dragon would be no match for the mighty Megalania. The Megalania lived during the Pleistocene era and inhabited the area that is now known as Australia. The Megalania would typically dine on large marsupials, flightless birds, and giant turtles, and would use its venomous bite to overpower its prey. It was also a heavy eater and typically consumed about 100 pounds of food per day. Probably as a result of all this eating, it was rather lethargic and made noisy movements. As a result, although it was able to accelerate quickly, it did not have much hope of running its prey on land. Since this did not allow for high-speed pursuits, it instead took a more subtle approach. In a similar fashion to many modern-day lizards, the Megalania would typically ambush its prey by waiting at a game trail or watering hole in silence. Then, at the opportune moment, it would pounce on its unsuspecting prey, slicing its neck with its massive jaws before it had time to react. The Megalania is one of the only giant lizards of its era whose extinction cannot be traced directly back to the early humans. Rather, it is believed that the slow disappearance of its preferred prey was a dominant factor in its demise. Now that's not to say that humans didn't play an indirect role. After all, early Australians enjoyed hunting the slower oversized herbivores that the Megalania fed on. And so the Megalania was slowly outcompeted for food. Although this led to the last Megalania dying out around 50,000 years ago, many still think that the large and relatively uncharted Australian outback may still be home to them. However, despite the widespread speculation, there's no solid evidence to support this theory. Unfortunately, no intact Megalania skeleton exists, and scientists have had to use partial skeletons teeth, various limbs, and pieces of vertebrae to reconstruct what a Megalania would look like. This has led to there being a lot of speculation as to what the Megalania's distinct features exactly were. However, what we do know is that it had sharp, curved teeth, an unusual crest on its snout, and that it was of course a massive reptile. Regardless, we're sure that if it were to exist today, it would seem closer to a dinosaur than a lizard by human standards. The Megalania belonged to the Varanidae family and was more closely related to modern-day snakes than to the lizards it more closely resembles. Interestingly enough, molecular evidence suggests that the Megalania's ancestors first evolved around 140 to 100 million years ago, during what is known as the Early Cretaceous period. Yet Australia may not have been the homeland of many of these cool creatures. It is likely that the mighty Megalania arrived in present-day Australia from neighboring Asia, traveling across the microcontinents that would have connected the two during the early Cretaceous period. Although much of the world had saber-toothed tigers, short-faced bears, and other ferocious mammals as apex predators of the day, the same could not be said for Australia. That's because in Australia, giant reptiles were keen. Monstrous snakes and land-dwelling crocodiles reigned, with the most notable being the one and only Megalania. Thus, the disappearance of these reptiles led to an ecological disruption. The main culprits of their disappearance include early human settlers who outcompeted them for food and a changing climate that they had trouble adapting to. With these developments causing smaller predators such as the Tasmanian tiger and Tasmanian devil to thrive, the massive Megalania quickly died out. Considering that the Megalania went extinct about 50,000 years ago, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the ecosystem has changed significantly since then. The most notable change occurred when humans introduced the dingo about 4,000 years ago. 
The placental mammal, which hails from Asia, was and remains a more efficient hunter than the indigenous Tasmanian devil or Tasmanian tiger, which allowed them to easily outcompete the local competition. However, in the last 200 years, the introduction of European cats and red foxes have kicked the region's ecological problems into high gear. These animals have devastated the smaller marsupials that had formerly been the apex predators because like the dingo, they were simply better hunters. This has led to a number of extinctions over the years that show shocking similarities to that of the Megalania, with the most notable being the Tasmanian tiger's extinction in 1936. The predominant sense that the Megalania depended on was its sense of smell. In order to smell the area around them, they frequently flicked out their tongue, using it in a similar fashion of how humans would use their nose. In particular, the Megalania would do this in order to pick up bits of information about its surroundings, analyzing the scent particles its tongue captured to determine what was nearby. Having the ability to detect whether its potential prey was healthy, sick, injured, or already dead, it was these hints in the air that would help it determine its movements. Then, its excellent vision would take over, allowing it to quickly see and pounce upon its potential prey. The marsupials of the Pleistocene era are thought to be closely related to the fluffy koalas and bouncy kangaroos we've come to associate with Australia. However, despite being related by blood, these marsupials were anything but tame, with some growing to the size of a Volkswagen Beetle and others possessing teeth longer than knife blades, they certainly weren't to be messed with. Yet these monster marsupials were not the only giants roaming the neighborhood. There also existed 500-pound birds, dinosaur-like tortoises, and other terrifying animals. While these creatures would be frightening enough to make most of us run in the other direction after seeing them, they nonetheless made a perfect meal for the Megalania. Although it may sound kind of crazy, humans actively spiritualized these beasts in the period in which humans and the Megalania cohabited. Much like modern day symbolic animals such as the lion, eagle, donkey, or dragon, humans would create legends and fables mentioning these beasts, often used as a symbol of something that was formidable and difficult to conquer. The symbolism surrounding the Megalania has now been all but lost, yet there still may be some aboriginal folklore that tells of these beasts. While it is difficult to confirm with certainty that this is a Megalania being mentioned in these stories, historian Peter Hancock contests that some of the stories told by the Noonga people speak of, quote, a crocodile, but there have never been crocodiles in Southwest Australia, so I looked for an explanation and Megalania fit the bill. Unquote. If it truly is the case, then these 50,000 year old stories could easily be some of the oldest mythical tales in the world. Thanks for watching Super Freaky Science, and don't forget to subscribe.